What is going on, everybody? Brent Abel, right here. Coldballhunting.com. That dude over there, the great Jeff Jacklich. Yes. Uh, he's not Pitbull. He's not uh, Mad Dog. Maybe <laughs> he's, he's just, he's, he's he's just searching for his first cup of coffee this morning. <laughs> right. Like he just said, lap dog. Um, guys, another episode of the Gold Ball Hunting Podcast. Today is episode number 330. Seven, as in Boomski. Um, Boomski. Yeah, so we got, uh, we got about a month before we hit the one-year mark, Jeffrey. Anyway, guys, we got, uh, as I said before, another episode of the Gold Ball Hunting Podcast. I don't know what it's going to be today, I, so I can't help you. I can't tease you in the intro here as to why to hang out with us today, but assuming that Jeff's got something spectacularis, um, I would hang in there with us for the rest of this episode. So the big question is this, how are tennis players like us who never played on the tour, weren't incredible juniors, or maybe got a late start to the game, how do we consistently compete at our highest skill level without having to grind through endless hours of encore practice time and still be in the hunt for the victory match after match? That is the question, and Gold Ball Hunting gives you the answers by helping you eliminate your skill level range so that you build a strong foundation of confidence. My name is Jeff Jacklich, and along with Brent Abel, my partner, welcome to Gold Ball Hunting. All right, young Jeffrey, what's going on there, son? Uh, well, we got another clear day here in NorCal. Wow. Um, wow. You know, and so I'm going to be on the court today, uh, about five hours. Uh, wow. Got three, three gold ballers lined up in a row. Um, so we got great sessions going on today. We're going we're gonna to dive in deep today. It's going to be good. good. Wow, that's um, so, great. That's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's really great when I get a, get a chance to get uh, get them out on the court, and we really get to dive in and and clean some things up, get clarity on things, you know. And uh, these and these aren't, you know, for everybody's information, these aren't these aren't way technical sessions, man. These are these are discovering pattern work, why you do certain things. Um, let's let's clean this little thing up a little bit. Your recovery is a little lagging, or you know, your your whatever it might be, you know, we get into those details because those are the things that really transform your skill set into something that we can use effectively against different opponents. You know, it's, it's those little micro adjustments, um, which is way different than thinking that you need a lag, a snap and a wipe. Um, uh, so <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not a lot of lagging and snapping and wiping going on out there today. No, if, if, if there is, they, they brought it with them. You know what I mean? It's already something that yeah. they, they've worked on and it's, it's, it is part of their stroke production that they've done for years. Yeah. Um, and then, so we just look at that and uh, again, nothing, it's not, it's not that that doesn't, you know, isn't a, a valid technical stroke. Let's not, you know, uh, I don't want to, but like, Oh, you shouldn't oh, but let's be, be honest. You know, we don't, we don't but, see a lot of lagging, snapping and wiping out there in the senior on right, you know, the, right. the top goal baller. So uh, I don't want anyone. I don't want to give anyone permission to go out there in the ball machine and to go. Oh well, Jeff said today that it's right. it's a thing, and uh, and it's it's a thing that we would probably encourage you to see what we can take away from it to get you more consistent. Because if right. you're not a consistent shot maker, ouch. Yeah, there's ouch. a just there's just an unbelievable amount of timing involved when you get to the snap part. <laughs> God, I saw that something is... on Facebook. I saw something on Facebook this this morning earlier today, and it showed the current. I don't know what the current was, but at some point it was the it was the men's top twenty ATP guys, and it showed a little clip of each one of their forehands. You know the modern ATP forehand, and there's no question that that first of all the grip is wow. Even Fed, I mean, you know, Fed's. Fed's a little bit around. He's not a full Western for, for sure, but he's not it's exactly a, Eastern. I mean, he's it's a, a way little, strong Eastern. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, but there's no question that there's this, there's this snap part to get racket head speed that if the timing is, I can't even make my fingers without right. touching them. <laughs> I mean, the timing is just insane. It's ridiculous, and you look at and these which guys, is, which is what makes them such phenomenal athletes. Oh I my mean, god! 
and, it's and ridiculously look, unbelievable. Yeah, I, yeah. It, you know, the pace of the incoming ball, to have the timing to be able to do this with the pace of the in, incoming ball and the explosion off the court. It's uh, silly. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's like I mean, me trying to play basketball against Shaq. You know, I mean, even, even now where he's, he's selling the gold bond stuff, he'd still he'd be gold bonding me right up the Right. We, we'd have to come up with some, you know, you know, some name for you that might instill a little fear like the albino flea or something. <laughs> <laughs> ouch, Some, ouch, it's, yeah it? yeah something that you know <laughs> might instill a little fear there but i don't think so anyway i, I don't think i don't think it's gonna happen so well, so, so today, what's going Brandon, on man i know what i know you got something for us today what's what i'm what's bringing up? you today and it has to do a little bit what we just started with um is is you know having having a game plan is essential Right. And having knowing knowing your pattern work is also another another requirement of being able to move yourself through more rounds in a tournament and actually start to tease and be in the hunt for a gold ball. And there is so much chatter out there as well right now about uh, plays, running plays. And. Um, Doubles can be a little bit different because the, the court geometry changes dramatically. You've got four guys on the court. And so there are some things that just are required about playing doubles, i.e. return to serve, i.e. the ability to place a serve really accurately. All the, all the, there are certain things there that, that are like, uh, uh, they're just non-negotiable. You need to have a certain set of skills uh, in the doubles arena for sure. Singles, though, you know, everybody has a slightly different personality. Everybody has a slightly natural kind of natural instinct about the way they play the game. Um, and they have a natural kind of draw to a certain style of play. So as much as you can pull up, um, you know, you can be a coach to do this play, does your skill set allow you to do it? And so that is what, to me, is like another missing major blind spot here in this whole, uh, in, in this understanding of the game. And it's where I think, you know, we talk about, you know, we're doing this workshop down in the desert, uh, you know, January, on the 16th and 17th of January. And that's what, that's part of what this is about. It's about really getting players to understand that I know you'd like to run this play. However, you can't with your skill set because you're missing this piece of the puzzle. And we can't do that in one day. But what you can do, how do we, how do we, you know, it's like you can go out there and find all this information about this is how you beat a pusher. Okay. Well, that requires a certain set of skills to pull that off in the manner that they're explaining. And so what I want to be clear about what Brent and I do is not that what we do is we look at your skill set and say now how do we do it with these ingredients how do i get this job done with these tools and that's the distinction here that i think is just just hugely important for players to our gold ballers to understand i got three different gold ballers today on the court and guess what i'm not doing the same thing with each one of them some of the pattern work may be similar but i'm going to be adjusting certain things to to suit their current skill set while we work on advancing some other skills. So then, so then that skill set, you know, gets broader down the road. This takes time. Um, so then now that now the construction of points becomes the, the selection to be able to construct a point and make adjustments becomes better. I, I have more options without being, uh, let's say wasteful of trying to do something that I can't do because I'm missing an ingredient. Um, anyway, so that, that was running through my head this yeah. morning as, as I was making my coffee. That Well, as you were um, talking about that, too, I was thinking about, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of hype out there, and there's a lot of generic, here's how to do this, here's how to beat the pusher, here's how to, right. here's how to dominate with a, a bludgeon, heavy forehand to the backhand, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And look, um, there's kind of, there's three different arenas. Well, first of all, there's, there's the hype, there's the marketing that says, Here's, here's how to do something, but you haven't actually done anything other than just listen to somebody or watch the video of someone else doing it. 
that's kind of thing one. The next thing is then maybe let's say that you got a pro who gets you out there in the court and under super controlled conditions, they can actually help create that template. They can and make you feel like, yeah. oh, I can do this. And then the yeah. next one is you actually go out and it's not quite as controlled. It's kind of a drill session with a practice partner and you don't have quite the same success, but gosh, you still have the feeling like, I could do this or I'm doing this. And then someone says, well, let's go into a tournament. And you go into the tournament and you get beat love and love trying to do that thing. And you realize, wait a minute. I personally don't have the unique tools to be able to do the thing that last month my guy sold me on that was under these super controlled conditions. Right. And then he, and then I get thrown out to the wolves and I, I no. And, and so I, I think that's right, Jeff, is, is really what, what you and I have been trying, the message that you and I have been trying to convey for the last 300 and today's number 337, <laughs> and what we want to help players do in January in the workshops is really help them find what do they, what do they realistically do well? <clears throat> Stop going, well, whoever you are, here's how to go out and beat this guy over here. No, no, no. Let's 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 reel it back in and let's right. go. Let's let's identify what are the things that you do well, and how can we devise a simple, tactical, whatever you want to call it, so that you get put in situations in matches where you get to do a lot more of that thing that you right. do well. Not what and, 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 and it in that process, we're going to discover. Um, what we actually need to, you know, add to the game if we need to add something or a, a, a different understanding about how to use uh, your forehand volley in a different situation, how to use that to actually hit your drop shot, how to, how to use some of the tools you already have to create some of these scenarios, you know, that actually puts you over the hump or at least in the hunt in that match where if, you know, it, sometimes it takes two or three matches to finally figure a guy out. And, and to come up, you know, devise the evil plan that will get you over the hump. And when you do that, it still doesn't mean a one in one victory. It, it, it could be, I finally figured it out. And with my skill set, it's going to be a day at the races, man. It's going to be an all day affair. It's going to take a long time to get this done. But I know with this skill set and this plan, I, I, I might be able to get it over the hump. And, and maybe you do. But I think that's, you know. Well, I think the thing here too is, is is that you know we may be raising the questions in some players' minds. Well, okay, you guys are advocating that 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 I discover what it is I really do well. How are you going to help me do that? Well, look, I mean, Jeff, if you underhand feed me balls to my backhand, I can go heavy on the eastern backhand grip and set up like Stan the man, and I can actually hit that thing. But you got to be underhand feeding me the ball. Right. Well, look, once the match starts, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm right. back to the hack attack. I'm sorry. I'm not going to stand the man on that back end. And, and even though I could in that super controlled situation in a real match. So, look, how are we going to help you guys find out what it is you really do well? Other than seeing you play, that's the only way that we can start the process of finding out. You might be, you might be thinking, well, I really need work on my forehand. Well, we might discover that your forehand's fine. It's just that you're trying to pull the trigger to a target that is like even smaller than that thing I said before, you know, right. that is like, it, it's, it's not technical. It's just that you're choosing yeah. the wrong spot to hit it at the wrong, at the wrong moment yeah. in the point. And I call, so I call that, I call that taking the bait when, yeah. when you think you've, you've, when you think you've created an opening, but, but the geometry is, is actually saying something else, but you're not, in tune you're not you don't you don't realize that the down the line uh you know laser beam is really not what you should be trying to go for right now it's just it isn't the option even though it looks like it is so i mean that's a play that i run against somebody take the bait go come on yeah uh, you know it's almost like playing possum go yeah come on hit that little carve up the line it's going to be fantastic <laughs> <laughs> whatever the scenario right. is, but I yeah. think a lot of players who are trying to break through 
that those are blind spots. It's not understanding that, like, like you just described that, you know what? And that's why I call it taking the bait is, is that they're being set up. They're being led down a path and they don't know it. Yeah. And that, and that's what we need to help you discover is, is the actual geometry, what's going on and what you should do with, with that skill set. I, I think another misperception is players think that, well, for me to get better, I need to be able to, um, and I think that's the whole reason why players work so much on technique, is the thinking that is, well, if I work more on technique, for me to get better, I'll actually, I'll actually fill up the stat sheet on winners more. And that's what right. will take me to become, if you're a 4 to get up to that 4-5 range. And, and that, couldn't be, that couldn't be further from the truth. I would say, right. Jeff, in the last five years, that I've, that I've found, and I, I can't prove it because I don't have the data, but it just feels like to me in singles and in doubles, especially in doubles, I feel like my ratio between outright winners and, and balls that they touch but don't come back has just gotten totally different. It's like yeah. all, my, my whole job is just I'm – not, I'm not a pusher. No, no one would right. say Brent Abel is a pusher. But I just know that it just, I just feel it, that, that, that I hit more balls that they touch. Right. That I just don't come back we, in the court. We call that old school. We call that journeyman tennis. That's right. That's yeah. what we call that, you know. And, I, and, and, and I've, I've clearly had the best results I've, you know. I mean, if you want to look up, if you want to say that res, results are winning national championships, then okay. Then I've had my best results over the last few years. Uh, in terms of goal balls, in terms of World Cup teams, and and I know that I'm hitting fewer outright winners than ever before. Right. So what does that all mean? Well, that all means that the the best way that we can help you guys become better players is to see how you react in actual matches, to see right. what your instincts are, and to help you discover your instincts when you do this one thing, dude. That's that's where you're gonna that's where you're gonna butter your bread right there, and right. just because some other guy is telling you, well, let's go ahead, lag, snap, and wipe for about six months, and then you'll right. boom. Yeah, Here, here's happen. here's another. You know, as you were talking there, it reminded me of something else. Um, another gold baller I'm working with, and um, you know, she's in the she's in the hunt, and and um, and she's a you know top top NorCal in, in her uh, you know in, in in her bracket, and um. But the blind spot is you, you might be able to get away with something, some pattern for the first couple rounds against a certain level of player. That's right. And you use this pattern and it's very effective. And then, and then you hit the brick wall and now the pattern is being turned on its heels and used against you. And, but you don't see it that way because this is something, this is a pattern that you do and you win with this pattern. And so I, I had to make that adjustment and we, I said, listen, you, this is what you don't realize is happening here is that, is that when you get to the top gals, they're, they're okay with you hitting that ball. In fact, they're going to bleed you for it at some point, you know? And so that was like an epiphany moment. Like, oh my God, wait a second. Okay. You mean I should go X, Y, Z? Yes. Yes. Don't take, again, take, you're taking the bait lower, you know, first couple rounds, you're fine with it. But I'd prefer even in those rounds, you start working on what you're going to need in the later rounds. <laughs> well, that's a good point. You know, like if you talk about, let's say some guy's a 4-0 player and he's playing against a 3-6 or a 3-7. And on the paper, the 4-0 guy should be winning this match every time. And, right. and, and look, I mean, it could be that you're, that you're trying to lag, snap, and wipe uh, against that 3-6 guy if you're a 4-0. Or if you're a four or five and you're doing that against a four one, something like that. And you know what? You're it, it seems like it's working, even though, even though you're missing, you're missing um, enough where it doesn't matter because that guy over there is, right. is is contributing. And then all of a sudden you get up with some guy who is right at your level or maybe a little bit better. And the next thing you know is you realize, wait a minute, I'm not getting as many free points as I was when I was playing the lower skilled guy. And now you try to really lag, snap, and wipe. And the next thing you know is, is now all of a sudden right. it's just a 
a race they, you to the know, bottom. The, 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 the pace changes. You don't realize that the pace that the, that the other guy was hitting, the, the, the lower guy was hitting in the first round, was just at the right pace for you to be able to look like a hero. I mean, it was like your pro was underhand feeding you the ball. Yeah, you know, it's a beautiful thing, and, and it's like I'm having a great day. You know, the forehand's really popping today, and, and, and it was based on the variables of that day. No disrespect. Um, but then the next day, I've got a, a seed or something, and you know what? He hits the ball 5, 10 miles an hour heavier. That's significant. And he, and, and, he, sudden, and, he, and he rarely misses. Yeah, and, and all of a sudden now your timing, it doesn't quite feel right. You feel like you're being pushed around, but you can't quite identify it. And, and things go a little bit south, and then they go heavy south, you know. And so um, these are the subtleties of this, why it's so critical to understand what your skill set is and how to use it. Um, because you, you, can't, you can't just, you know, grab a, a generic – uh, you know, game plan off the shelf and say, I'm going to do this now because you got to have all the ingredients that actually allow you to uh, allow that formula to work. And, and that's, that's just the bottom line. Yeah. So, so our, you know, working, working with the players down there in Palm Springs before the Wilson is uh, is a great opportunity for guys to come out and, uh, and gals to come out and, and discover, um, get some clarity about. Yeah. yeah. Th uh, Thursday and Friday, January 16th and 17th, we've actually, they're designed to be one day, uh, workshops where to just do a repeat performance on that second day. But if you want to sign up for both days, you're more than welcome to. We do um, require that you fill out an application because we got to vet everyone to make sure that, uh, that your skill level wise, the right fit for the group that, um, um, that we want to put you in. Uh, so look, the way to do that first, first of all, if you want to see everything that's that, that we're going to give you on that, on that one day workshop is uh, right down below this video wherever you are, there's a link that will take you to the info video about, about the workshops. Uh, check that out. And then if you've already seen that and you're kind of on the fence, but you decide it's time to fill out the application, there's also a link below this video that will take you directly to the application as well. Uh, Jeffrey, good stuff today. Yeah. Man. Thanks. That's a great topic. Uh, guys, if you certainly, if you have any questions, Regarding the uh, the workshops again, January sixteenth and seventeenth. That's a Thursday and Friday. It's right after. It's a, it's actually at the end. to schedule at the end of the Palm Springs Senior Tournament, Palm Springs Tennis Club Senior Tournament, and then right before the Wilson, which is uh, over at Shadow Mountain this year. It used to be at Mission Hill. Yeah. First year over at Shadow Mountain. Kyron uh, is going to do a great job. He's going to do a great job with the tournament. I, I just and actually, I'm interviewing him today, later on this afternoon. Um, Jeff, yep. what do we want the fine folks to do right now? Like us, share us, please subscribe. Let us know what you think down below, right, you know, right after you click that other button. <laughs> iTunes and Stitcher, rate and review. <coughs> Goldballhunting.com. Come on out, discover yeah. who yeah. you really are as a player. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Guys, get out there today. Help someone, uh, <laughs> help someone else have a spectacular day. Jeff? Let's try this again tomorrow. Can't wait.